Yeah, you've seen the rain tapering off tonight. Uh, cloudy skies overnight, but we should have sunny skies tomorrow. Highs tomorrow in the 50s to around 60. Our overnight lows 45 to 50. And for the weekend, we should have sunny skies on Saturday, partly cloudy on Sunday. Currently 48 in Agoura Hills, 52 in Ventura, and 55 degrees in Goleta at 751. Um, and then we're looking down on a uh, Trancus Creek riparian area that was also modern. A National Park Service biologist is leading us down a steep trail in the Santa Monica Mountains south of Westlake Village. The mountains all around us and the valley below us have been blackened and stripped bare by the Woolsey Brush Fire. In a few months, these slopes will start to turn green again, but the question is, will it be in a healthy way? It's kind of a drama between uh, the non-native and the native plants, and we know who we'd like to see win that out. Mark Mendelson is a vegetation and wildlife biologist with the National Park Service. He leads us down into the canyon as he starts an assessment of the damage. We are in Trachis Canyon, so we're just south of the former Malibu Club golf course. We're in a moderate burn severity area of the fire. We still have lots of shrub skeletons, um, and then we're looking down on a Trancus Creek riparian area that was also moderately burned. We've got some water in the creek here that looks pretty muddy. As we continue down the trail, the biologist says with rain from three storms since the fire, we're already seeing some early signs of recovery. Some tiny sprouts here and there. It's a race of sorts, pitting native species versus the invasive ones. We have a lot of our native plants that are a lot slower in their recovery. And so really it's gonna be about us getting out here and treating those non-native plants, which give the, the good plants, the native plants, the opportunity to recover fully. Mendelssohn says rainfall is the key. He says it's not just getting it, it's how much we get. What we hope to see is well-timed, moderate rains. I'd say like what we've gotten so far with, you know, an inch here, or maybe an inch and a half there, where you don't get these catastrophic slides that'll just create more disturbance, should give the native seeds the opportunity to come up and thrive. It's those non-native seeds and, and non-native plants that are more adapted to even drought conditions. Normal rainfall, normal or above average rainfall, will tend to give our native plants the better advantage. Off to the side of the trail, we spot a tiny little green sprout. It could be our, our one of our natives. What would really give it away is if we saw a bunch here, an old, an old tuft, because um, oftentimes, and I, actually, I am kind of seeing something. So I wouldn't be surprised if this is one of our native um, purple needle grasses or, or of that group, one of our native needle grasses coming up. But as we reach the area of the creek, there's what looks like the remains of a stand of bamboo trees. It's not bamboo, it's a rundo, a fast-growing invasive species, and there are some fresh green stalks. This giant cane, this arundo is so, is so fast-growing, it's like bamboo. It's about a foot taller than I saw it about a week ago. This plant has such an elaborate and immense underground structure that it is capable of tolerating 
even these moderate to high intensity fires. Mendelssohn says with 96,000 acres of land burned, there's only so much they can do to try to get rid of non-native species like Arundo. But he says they're trying to get funding to do what they can. We're going to lean on nature to do most of the work. We're all going to get to as much land as we can. He says as far as nature is concerned, there's also something good coming out of the fire. The biologist says we'll see some native plants that we rarely find. Their seeds actually need that heat or smoke to break the seed coating, which allows them to germinate. We get dozens and dozens of beautiful herbaceous plants that spring up in the one to two to sometimes even three years with good rains following a fire. And then they're usually shaded out by the shrubs. As we start to hike out of the canyon, Mendelssohn says we'll see green slopes returning next spring. But he says full recovery can take decades. For a community like this, a chaparral community, we're talking about probably 10 to 20 years. For our coastal sage scrub, 5 to 10 years. A biologist says a big concern is that historically before humans moved to the region, fires of this type in the Santa Monica Mountains were a 50 to 200 year occurrence. Now they happen much more frequently. The mountains aren't getting the chance to fully recover, so in some areas he says we're seeing a gradual change in the plant composition that's part of the landscape. In Trancas Canyon, Lance Sorosco, KCLU News. Good morning, friends. This is KCLU 